Well, hello, everyone. This is your friendly neighborhood pastor, Pastor Chris Johnson, coming to you from Christ the King Lutheran Church in Escanaba, Michigan. Today is December 13th. We're getting ready for the fourth Sunday in Advent. Hard to believe uh, Christmas Eve is right around the corner, Christmas Day as well. And this fourth Sunday in Advent, as we get closer to the birth of Jesus, we hear this week um, how Joseph found out about the birth of Jesus. And so our gospel reading for this weekend is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. So let me go ahead, as always, read the passage for you and then give you some thoughts and ideas and reflections on what's going on here. So St. Matthew writes in chapter 1, starting at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord. This passage um, is getting us more focused onto the birth where in this week we're, we're transitioning more from the, the parousia, the second coming of Christ now to the, the first advent of Christ, how he was born, 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 born in Bethlehem. And this passage uh, and Matthew tells us Joseph's side of the story, as it were. We hear in Luke's gospel, Mary's side of the story, be the angel Gabriel comes and speaks to Mary in person. Uh, in Matthew's Gospel, we hear about Joseph and how an angel of the Lord, unnamed, an unnamed angel, um, speaks to Joseph in a dream. And so just really quickly, uh, some things to, to take note of here. Uh, there's a number of, of, of different Old Testament echoes going on in this passage. Uh, number one, we've got the Old Testament citation from Isaiah chapter 7 about the, the prophecy of a virgin conceiving and, and bearing a child whose name shall be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Uh, and, and in Matthew's gospel, Old Testament prophetic fulfillment is a key thread that runs throughout the gospel, that what God has promised to the Old Covenant community of Israel is coming to fruition through the work and the person of Jesus Christ. And so there's that continuity between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament, between the people of Israel and the New Israel, the church, which includes um, Jew and Gentile. And so this is one of the first uh, prophecies that is being fulfilled. And what that is to say is that God, God keeps his promises. God is someone who can be trusted. God keeps his word. Um, God does not lie. Uh, he tells the truth and he fulfills his promises. Of course, God's fulfillment of his promises don't always come on our time. Uh, we remember way back in Genesis, Abraham and Sarah had to wait 20 years before they received their promised child uh, in, in Isaac. And so um, here is the long-awaited Messiah who is finally being born. And so God's trustworthiness being at stake and being fulfilled uh, here in Jesus. Very, very important. Uh, another important aspect about this passage is about Joseph. We hear about Joseph, how he is a, a righteous man. Uh, now, what does this mean? Well, this means he is, in the Old Testament sense, righteousness means morally upright. They, they do uh, what God's law says to them. They, they, they follow the Lord. Um, they follow the Lord's word. And, and uh, Joseph, in this passage, does follow the law. Uh, but in one sense, he, uh, I don't want to say breaks the law, but he skirts around the law for the sake uh, of mercy because he would have been very justified in divorcing Mary, who was not um, 
married exactly, uh, but but close enough. He, they were betrothed, they were engaged, and, and so um, the, the the marriage wasn't consummated. Uh, in, in ancient Israel, marriage, um, the betrothal would happen, and then a year later, the marriage would be consummated um, in the bridal chamber, and that's when the, that's when uh, the marriage would be official. But during that in between time, the people were still in a sense, married, uh, but not quite there. And so Joseph, he could have uh, followed the letter of the law and not only dismissed Mary, but also exposed her to public shame and disgrace. Uh, but he doesn't do that. He, he, um, well, he listens to the angel, of course, in his dream. Um, but even before he listened to the angel, he was going to dismiss her quietly to, to help her save face. And so we see some of that righteousness there because Joseph, he's, you know, he's not in on everything. He doesn't know that his virgin bride has been, uh, is going to be conceiving a child who, through the creative power of the Holy Spirit, has made and knitted in Mary's womb um, the child who will become, who we, who we will later know as Jesus. And so, uh, Joseph finally gets word of that, and he keeps her, and so he um, does something very righteous in that he adopts Jesus as his own child, which means he confers all of his privilege uh, on upon uh, upon Jesus. And so Jesus rightfully can say that he is a son of David because Joseph is from the lineage of David. Again, more Old Testament prophetic material coming through um, through Joseph, but in a little bit of a different way. Um, some other Old Testament echoes we hear. Um, you know, Joseph is, we, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph in a dream. We can think about the Old Testament Joseph who could interpret dreams. We can also think about Daniel who also interpreted dreams, though they didn't necessarily get a whole lot of dreams themselves. Um, we hear about Jacob in, in the book of Genesis, uh, where he has that dream of the ladders of angels, the angels coming up and down the ladders from heaven down to earth. Um, Solomon, uh, the Lord spoke to the Lord, uh, the Lord spoke to Solomon in a dream, and, and that's where Solomon received his wisdom. And so uh, a lot of different Old Testament echoes with, with, with dreaming and um, angelic visions and uh, appearances, um, you know, coming into play here. Uh, some other things to take note of, um, Jesus' name. Um, his name meaning Jesus saves, or that God saves, and that uh, Matthew's Gospel lifts up what exactly we are saved from, uh, that we are saved from sin. And so we get a part of the story here, and so Matthew's kind of teasing us here with, with salvation from sin. Well, how is, how is salvation from sin going to happen? Not only that, but why is salvation from sin so, so important? Uh, Matthew will talk about how um, salvation of sin happens, that is through the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord. Uh, the letters of Paul will dwell more in, in depth on why this kind of works, so to speak, how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection um, procures forgiveness for us, which uh, turns away God's wrath, God's judgment, uh, brings us back into God's good graces, um, imputes the righteousness to us, righteousness that we cannot in and of ourselves have, but we receive from another, from Jesus Christ himself. And so just a lot of uh, very important biblical themes going on in this passage, and, and certainly just in Jesus' name, that he saves. Saves from what? Saves from whom? Well, we are saved by God from God um, because we receive all that God is and all that God has, and God takes everything away from us that um, God should not take upon himself. Sin, death, judgment. Uh, Luther called this the blessed exchange, and what a, what a happy and blessed exchange uh, it is indeed. So, like I said, lots of things going on here with Jesus' name, um, being Savior, uh, Emmanuel, very high Christology right away in Matthew, that Jesus is God. There's no bones about that. Um, and uh, Old Testament echoes. So, you have lots of fun with this passage. There's so much going on here. A good study Bible will help you um, make those connections because just reading it from a first glance, you might miss those connections. I'd also encourage reading uh, the genealogy of Jesus, too, because that... Um, slides right into his birth, making some of, helping us make some of those Old Testament connections and echoes. Uh, so have fun with this passage, this fourth Sunday in Advent, as you get ready for the birth of the Messiah and get ready for the good news of Jesus breaking into this weary and uh, broken world to give us life, to give us hope, to give us God himself. So may God bless you today and always, and we'll talk to you next time. Take care.